Hello everyone, it is good to have you here with us as we speak with Ms. Siobhan Phipps of St. Kitts and Nevis. Today we are going to explore some more about her as a young, aspiring leader and hopefully give you some pointers to achieving this on your own. So Ms. Phipps, we welcome you and Thanks. we are happy to have you here with us. So we're going to start the ball rolling immediately. So tell me, tell me about how you got involved in women in politics and the Leadership Institute. And you could tell us more about yourself as well. Okay, so my hi everybody, my name is Siobhan Phipps. I'm 23 years old and I'm from St. Kitts and Nevis. I was recently a participant in the Women in Politics and Leadership Institute. It was organized by the U.S. Embassy to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. And funny enough, one of my friends from Trinidad is who forwarded me the application flyer and told me that she think that would be fit for the participants that they were looking for. And those, those people that know me know that I usually take a while to decide on getting involved in stuff. And I think I didn't apply until like two days before the deadline because I was still very uncertain of if I wanted to participate or not. But I was successful. The organizers told us that there were about 100 applicants and only 27 of us were selected from the Eastern Caribbean. And it was very rewarding and humbling for me. I was the youngest participant selected at 23, but it was a really good opportunity to connect with young women like myself around the Caribbean who have a passion for service and development of women and persons within our different communities in the Caribbean. It was initially created to celebrate the 100th year of women being able to vote in the United States. And so they wanted to do something to celebrate that momentous occasion. So they decided on creating an institute that sort of reached out to young women who are in positions of leadership and stuff like that in the Caribbean. It's really aimed at um, increasing the participation of women in politics in the Caribbean and sort of encouraging women to get involved and represent because um, sometimes we find that when policies and different legislation are created in the Caribbean, it often lacks a feminine perspective. And it's not that, uh, I don't think it's an intention thing for our regional leaders to do that, but more so because of the lack of women in parliament, there's nobody really to voice our opinion and so there are certain areas of issues that really need a feminine perspective because like for example water to men is totally different to water for women so water not being available to a community for three days for a man is totally different for a female not having water for three days because we have different needs and our body naturally our bodies operate differently and simple things like water shortages may seem menial to men but then for women it's really a big thing and so this institute i hope it kind of creates the next generation of women leaders in our caribbean region and so yeah that's what it really was about so um with regards to your experience really this leadership process how was it how was it being a part of the institute and what are some of the takeaways that you would have from um, being involved in this, um, this, 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 this process? Well, first of all, for me, it was very rewarding because some of our presenters were like senators in the United States, um, Senate, um, Democrats and Republicans. And we were also able to interact with some of the women leaders in the Caribbean. So Honorable Sandra Husbands was one of, from Barbados was one of our presenters. For me, it really was an institute that was more than just focusing on women in politics, but it really taught us about being a woman in a professional world and how little things like what we wear could really determine a lot of our opportunities or sometimes even like your relationship status and how people treat you based on what your relationship status is as a professional woman in a growing world. So for me, I found that it was really eye-opening, especially as a 23-year-old who's still growing and still learning myself. It was really important for me and it was really, I guess, a sort of an eye-opener, some of the things that I was able to learn in such a short time about being a brand and how people associate your personal life with your professional life. 
And as much as we like to think that they are separate, they still overlap in some instances. And so it's important for us to maintain proper traits as a personal person, as in your person, so that it doesn't affect you professional life. Oh, okay, nice. Um, yeah. I know you, you spoke about it in terms of having a lot of, I mean, the, 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 the Americas really lent itself, or America, I should say, really lent itself to this initiative. But do you think that something like this is needed in our own region? When you say something like this, you mean... Meaning, sorry, my apologies. In terms of this initiative, this, this Women's Institute, because I know you said it came out of the, the United States with regards yeah. to that whole development of, of, of women having more freedom and things like that. But um, would you, do you think that a region like us, this, the Caribbean region, do you think that we should have our own? Yes. Yeah, so I think over the past few years, we've really seen a change in what political parties look like in the Caribbean. Um, we're sort of moving away from the male-dominated political party to more include women and youth. We're seeing younger persons running for parties. We're seeing more women running. I mean, we recently had our first female prime minister. I mean, Barbados recently had their first female prime minister. And even that was an eye-opener that in 2020, Barbados is only now having their first female prime minister and same kids, we've yet to have one. We currently only have one female in parliament and from the previous administration, there was also only one female in parliament. And so I think that it isn't that we don't have women interested in being in leadership, in being in leadership positions in the Caribbean. I think it's just that we were sort of conditioned in the Caribbean to what politics for us looks like. And so institutes like these sort of give me, young women like me, this sort of boost or stepping stone that we need to transform and step into leadership positions to try and develop and change your country for the better. Okay, not bad. And if you had to leave some messages for our youths coming up, um, with regards to this initiative, this, the, the, the Women Institute, what are some of the messages do you think you'd leave for them, especially for all young women to be successful in the Caribbean region? I live by the personal motto that falling down doesn't make you a failure, staying down does. And I've had to learn that every loss is not a loss in essence. Sometimes, sometimes there's really some nuggets in a loss and you really learn to back yourself one and trust your ability and trust that even though this opportunity may, may not have worked out that there really is something waiting for you behind the next hurdle um this institute has also showed me that no matter your age you shouldn't be afraid to take a leap of faith because like i said there were over 100 applicants and i was 23 i was the youngest participant also, I also learned to be comfortable in where you are as a growing youth and as a young person because sometimes we like to feel as youth that we're probably not doing enough or we're not where we should be. But I learned that as much as you recognize that there is always room for growth, you must also be, you must also be comfortable in where you are and know that you are doing what you need to be doing to get to where you want to be. So just to trust your journey and so pace yourself because you don't want to be burnt out. So just take time and patience and you'll get, you'll get there eventually. Okay. And one last question. So what could you say to, or what do you think needs to be done to encourage young women to be more involved in politics? Um, I think, I th I, I'm, this is a good question because I think it's not that, it isn't a welcoming scene for women in the Caribbean. I think us as women have just been so accustomed to seeing male dominated parties that it really is a moment of self-belief for us if we choose to enter like say politics or leadership. I know for me, I don't know as yet if it's my intention to get involved in politics, but I've always been a person that tries to make change where I can. And so that's how I really got involved in a lot of leadership positions in school and extracurricular activities. It wasn't, ev it wasn't ever about politics per se, but it was really about just trying to make change or try to move further an organization where I can see fit. So, so you, so you would say it's, it's more about 
seeking to make changes rather than focus on getting into a particular area. Not, right. Yes. So it's not necessarily about having to get into parliament or having to run on a party's ticket, but more so trying to make change where you can, whether it is that you start your own organization to tackle an issue in your community, or if you partner with your old high school to try and help something that the high school is dealing with. For me, it's more than just the national politics, the, ma the national politics of it, but more about making change and just helping things get better for my generation and those to come. Oh my goodness, Miss, Miss Phipps, I have to say thank you very much for those words. And I love that positivity and energy that you're showing, especially with being involved in as a leader, as a young lady, especially in, in a leadership position. And, you know, we speak about the whole idea of looking for women in politics. And I really would hope that one day you can be that young lady as well. Because I know, I know it might be challenging, especially in politics, because of the, the ramblings that may happen. I, I, I'm not too sure much about in St. and Nevis, but in Trinidad, you know, we do have some tussles in between. But no matter the tussles, yeah. each person is focusing on national development. And I am, I am firm up, I'm a firm believer that you as well are looking at um, um, national development in St. Kitts and Nevis. All right, so I want to say thank you very much on behalf of the CVE team. Thank you very much for being with us here this, this day and continue to stay strong, continue to focus on development um, as, a young lady, as a young woman. And you know, thank you very much for giving us your time.